Hey, leaders and learners, Lenard Geddes here, founder of the Learn Well Projects. I'm excited on this November 1st, 2023, because in about 12 days, on November 13th, my forthcoming book, How to Successfully Transition Students into College, will be available for pre-order. And then uh, shortly after that, on December 4th, the actual books began rolling out to people all around the world. So I'm excited to share some things about this book. And I should say that this will be the first of many recordings as I share with you insights that um, that are directly from the book and based on my experiences about why I wrote the book. So in this first post today, I want to journey back to my beginning uh, career in higher education and share with you a little bit about some of the reasons that inspired me to write this book. Today, I'm gonna to cover the first reason, and then each day I'm gonna share a different reason why I wrote this book, and then I'm gonna get into sharing some specific uh, components of the book. I'm so excited to share these with you. So let's go back about two decades ago. I began my career in the late 90s um, as an admissions counselor at Lenore Ryan University, and I spent much of my career there um, in about the early 2000s, I started, I moved from admissions over to student affairs. I began my career with student affairs as the director of multicultural success, which I had a lot of success there, which I talk about a little bit in the book because it helped me become better at serving students academically, which is what the book focuses on. But um, in about 2002, I became the director of student success. And it was during the early part of my career at Lenore Ryan University that I discovered that I had a knack for turning fledgling programs into exemplars and doing it almost instantaneously. So starting out in student affairs, I led many initiatives to revamp programs that were highly impactful to the student out of class experience, such as new student orientation, multicultural student student services, campus activity boards, family weekend, homecoming, Greek life. Um, so many, so many programs like that that were um, impactful to how students enjoyed or experienced the college outside of the classroom. And the turnarounds became quite predictable. I mean, it was like I would take over a program. Um, one year and then the program wasn't doing that well and then the next year almost immediately the program exceeded every metric from attendance to excitement enthusiasm to you know academic reward all of these outcomes that I and others created for these programs they they exceeded them and so my next challenge came a few years later in the mid 2000s, about 2005 or six, when um, the administration asked me to bring some of that success over to the academic side of the house, so to speak. And so students and faculty were working hard in their respective roles. And however, upon surveying the practices um, at our institution and at other institutions, I saw a glaring gap in both the literature and practice. The common perceptions amongst schools at that time was that students who underperformed simply were not prepared well from their high schools or they were prepared, but they were just wasting their time goofing off in college. They couldn't manage their time. And so those were the two prevailing perspectives. And I refer to this in the book as the Papa John's, Papa John's method of student success, which if you're familiar with Papa John's, the pizza chain slogan, it's better ingredients, better pizza. And so many faculty believe that if you give me better students, then I'll give you better results. You know, they were searching for these magical students that could learn independently, and so forth and and so that was kind of their their motto or their mentality at that time and so when I started looking at students more closely I realized that most students indeed gave their best effort but repeated setbacks led to a cycle of discouragement and what seemed like apathy among students was actually a disguise for their struggles and so our solution was a shift in the academic support methods um, I was able to introduce what many now recognize as metacognitive tutoring. Um, our, our recognition was uh, made known at the, I think, 2012 National College Learning Center 
where we um, received recognition for winning the Brenda Failard, I believe, award, or was received a grant to build upon the program. And we had a lot of success with the program. And in fact, institutionally, the results spoke for themselves. Grades among students skyrocket particularly among first year students and often students would succeed with only a couple of sessions of tutoring. And so more important than the specific success students had um, through tutoring, students quickly emerged as independent learners. And in fact, one shining light of the program was that our College of Nursing, which had a lot of students who were struggling to make the grade in that program, uh, received a 100% first time pass rate on the NCLEX, which is the national nursing exam. And they had never had that kind of success with uh, their students before. And they were attributing some of their success to the work that we were doing in the learning center. In fact, I and a group of students got invited to a ceremony in which the, uh, the school of nursing was being recognized for this stellar achievement. And so over time, our learning center shifted its strategy instead of working reactively, aiding students after they had already struggled, we began to become proactive, or as I like to say, we went on the offense, collaborating with faculty and programs to reshape our campus culture and help students achieve more success earlier. And the institutional data reflected our triumphs. The university boasted some of its highest retention rates, uh, persistence and graduation rates in recent memory. And so soon other institutions sought my expertise on how we could replicate those successes. And we, I was able to work with now dozens of institutions to help replicate or exceed those successes that um, that I enjoyed and that we enjoyed at Lenora University. And so why did I write how to successfully transition students into college from traps to triumphs? Well, the first reason is because I've helped many institutions achieve impressive results quickly and in ways that have endured the test of time. I share their stories often in their own words throughout the book. I tried to provide a 360 degree view of their stories, including students, faculty, administrators, and even some parents' voices throughout the book. This way you have a high resolution look at how to empower more students at your institutions and how to seamlessly and successfully transition more students into college. So that's my first reason is because I've been pretty good at this and I've been able to partner with other institutions to help them uh, successfully transition students as well. And so in tomorrow's video, I'll share my second reason for writing this book, which is my rock solid belief in the dignity of students and faculty. It pains me to this day to know that so much hard work and resources are not translating into effectiveness. And so I'll share some compelling stories from the book in tomorrow's video. So hopefully you like this video, you'll get more of these. Again, I'm gonna to try to get one out several times uh, a week. Let me know what questions or situations you'd like to see addressed by the book and leave your remarks in the comment section and be sure to like this video and subscribe so you can be personally notified when new material is released. Thanks. Remember, if students think well, they will learn well and perform well in school, work, and in life.